Welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, attending the MOOC. We are already in the last week of this uh, MOOC. I think you enjoyed, we enjoyed very much and we like to go over and, uh, the, the topics we already did. So we know that you as a passenger, you can see what complexity you have in this railway uh, business. And I think you already discovered that it is not that easy to find a real good solution and how to continue. So you see also the uh, cartoons uh, we already uh, did and uh, discussed with you. And we go from you as a passenger, you need some, uh, some uh, tools, how to go into the, the track uh, the world. And then you go from stations, environments, to the uh, real-time tabling, disruptions, how this is work, maintenance. And at the end, this week, we go for the future. So let's see if we have some new things to, uh, to, in, uh, to dis discover and also develop in the next years. In week one, we already discussed tracks and trains and also the interaction in between. So it is really important that you really know what is the interface in between these two assets. These two worlds look apart, but it is really combinated. We also went into our lab, so we see some test rigs, how this works and what, they, uh, how, what we can do with that. And that's also interesting also for you as a, uh, participants uh, on this MOOC. What can we do in this railway uh, in a system? And secondly, we also zoom in, not only on wheel rail, but also on the pantograph and uh, the, the catenary and the, the interaction in between, so the energy, the energy flow. So when you have the pantograph and also the rolling pantograph we showed, and I think at the last we did also a, a study and analysis about the forces into a switch. When you look at the world map, on every dot you see on this uh, world map, it is a city in the world, and I really appreciate that you also upload all kinds of information we ask for and also encourage you to go on for this because it is really exciting that you can share this information with all the others who are uh, in this MOOC. And I think that's really an additional information for all of you, also for me. So I learn a lot of other stations and other possibilities and all the countries and, and cities in this world map. So I really think this is a an, really good addition for all of us. In week two, you as a passenger, you like to start with your journey and you have to find also the signs to go to the station. And the station is in the center of the city mostly and therefore it is nice to make your, your start with your journey. But you also have the interaction with the environment like noise and vibrations. And therefore you also find a way uh, and also is connected with the interaction with, uh, with you as a passenger. About interaction, you also have interaction with me when you had the question inside uh, the MOOC, when you have an ID, you can send this to me and I give uh, some answers to that. We have also a case study with the state, uh, city of Lille in the north of France, where we put a high-speed line inside the station and also connecting high-speed line with other uh, cities. So we had it's an impact and also interaction inside the city. We have also an impact on the national level because you are connected with other cities and also international because now Lille is also connected with Brussels Paris and London. When we look at about interactions, we have this serious game of asset management and we like to have an opportunity for you that you can design also to operate and also to maintain and also the interaction in this, we should have a full package, how this, does this work? And of course we had some disruptions and then we like uh, to show you how this interaction and dis disruptions looks like and how to act in this way. In week uh, three, we already discussed about operations, the timetabling. And we like to discuss and also to show you how you make such a timetable. Like how do the distance between the trains, how to make this uh, all kind of dilemmas. We have all kinds of questions from operators and how to match this and how to merge this in the infra system. Therefore, we have also EATMS, so we can uh, increase capacity or other kinds of things. And these dilemmas and also the, um, you get disruptions and how to make an um, uh, adaptable timetable when you have problems in track, for example, with disruptions and when people are uh, or other events with, with people outside. So I think um, predefined solutions is necessary, also flexibility. 
For example, we had the case of Schiphol. When you have the Schiphol case, we see when we have some disruptions on one or two platforms or one line, then it sounds okay, we can handle that. But we see also in the case that we have a lot of uh, uh, radiation on the other uh, tracks and other cities and also other connections with, with trains. And therefore, it is, sounds easy to say, okay, I have only one problem on one line, but it can affect all kinds of other lines in the, in the national wide. In week four, we discussed about disruptions and also external disruptions you have, for example, by human, but also weathers and other conditions. And then the question is, okay, how to get uh, an, a solution with that? And therefore, you have to go to the traffic control because they have to manage these problems and disruptions. Therefore, you can also look, okay, what can I do? You can go back, for example, in, in, in time with, with the statistics and you can also learn from that. And you can also have these causes and effects, how to prevent all these kinds of problems, to get rid of these uh, problems as soon as possible for you as a passenger. Of course, we have also emergencies, of course, accidents can happen, and emergency service we have uh, too. And therefore, you can see how to be flexible and dynamic to solve these kinds of problems uh, within the disruptions itself. And then we have a nice discussion on our forum of the MOOC with all uh, people who are discussing in between. And I really like this discussion all over the world was going going about automatic train operations. What that does it mean? And I think the problem is, um, do we like this? That's really an issue. Do we like this way of, uh, of transport? Because technically it's no problem, but we have ethics problems and also other problems are uh, about uh, do we really like this? Is it, is it uh, a way we, uh, we can do? And do we already uh, ready for this kind of technique? Week five, we discussed uh, monitoring. Monitoring, we mean how can we do preventive maintenance? and get information out of data we get outside by all kinds of sensors so we can have big data analysis to get all this information out of this huge amount of data. And it is possible, so technically we can get this data and therefore you need also an analysis and also the all kinds of techniques to get preventive maintenance. When you don't do this and you, don't, and you just missed a small crack for example, it will break and then you get a tremendous disruption into the, in the, the infra, maybe also a safety issue. So when you like to prevent this, you have to zoom in of this kind of uh, sensors. For example, when we have the Hilversum case in the city in Holland, we have a derailment by a um, full train. And you could say, uh, what happens over there? That's a good question. But then you look and examine the, and do the analysis of what is really was breaking. That was just a small ring and also because of a small cracks fatigue cracks. And then you can have the question in your mind, okay, what can I do with that? How do I have to do some sensors inside to see how big or how, how the cracks are growing inside so you are just in time to do the preventive maintenance? Week six. So we are looking for ahead and looking for the future. We have special uh, new systems already uh, in development. And we have also special systems. That means that all kinds of uh, cities or countries are, have their own way of developing and uh, exploring new ways of transport by, by trains. Um, we zoom in in this MOOC, especially on monorail, because that's more or less the red wire you can see in all kinds of designs all over the world. And when we have this monorail, we can also talk about, okay, what about the propulsion? Uh, how about traction in this special monorail? Because that's really different than we have in the conventional railway business we have now at the moment. So an example in this one is the Hyperloop. Hyperloop is, I think, well known that TU Delft has also developed a way of doing a Hyperloop system. And of course, when you look in the movie scenes, you have all kinds of possibilities also in future lookalikes of trains. That's also a question to you. Maybe you can also search for us uh, too to find all kinds of scenes in movies. So what is following up? So when you like this uh, ed online education, there is three modules worked out in detail to learn more about railway uh, business. Online, so please give it an, an, an ID if you are willing this. And I think it is really recommending to follow this. It's about train interaction and about railway operations and also the, the, the performance over time. 
I think these three modules are coming, so please be aware of this and be there.